Hello out there everyone, Manny here at Area 503, and I hope you all have been well since our last video. Up here in the Pacific Northwest, we have a long history of unexplained phenomenon and UFO sightings, going all the way back to the late 40s. So in today's video, we're just going to take a little bit of time and review some of these cases and look at some of the evidence. May 24th, 1949. Two employees of NACA, which was a predecessor of NASA, were out on the Rogue River when they spotted what could only be described as an unidentified flying object. Now they would witness this craft for a good two and a half to three minutes and they did have a pair of eight power binoculars with them and they stated that they were able to get a good enough look at it to see that the bottom of the craft appeared to be dirty and that there was patchwork on the top of it. Now during this time the craft was moving horizontally and was accelerating and as it picked up speed it finally disappeared away from them. But the two were very adamant in what they saw and they made these drawings. This case is one of the oldest known UFO sightings in the country, if not the world, and to this day it continues to be a matter of debate for believers and skeptics alike. May 11th, 1950. It's 7.30 p.m. and Evelyn Trent is walking back to her house after feeding some rabbits on her farm. Before reaching the house, she looks up in the sky and she sees a slow-moving, metallic, disc-shaped object that is heading towards her from the northeast. She yells inside for her husband Paul to grab the camera and meet her outside. Outside, the couple snap two iconic photographs that would later become known as the McMinnville UFO photos. To this day, the McMinnville UFO photographs have been the subject of many different independent reviews and analysis. However, none have been conclusive, and so I suspect people will be talking about these photos for a long time. In 2008, a MUFON Oregon investigator would unearth these photos. A local woman would claim to have found them in her mother's possessions after she passed away. However, with no dates of reference and no witnesses, it's hard to give very much credence to these photos. However, they are exceptionally amazing and I had to include them in here. July 23, 1998, just outside of Canby, Oregon, a pilot is landing at Lendhart Airport when he spots some curious crop circles from the air. The local farmer who owned the land knew nothing about the crop circles as there was no way to access them from the ground and they were not visible from any local roads. To this day, no one can sufficiently explain how these crop circles were made in the middle of a field without the owner's knowledge and without any visible way in or out. May 15, 2004 Two women are riding their bicycles down the East Bank Esplanade across the river from downtown Portland. They look up in the sky and notice a dark, cigar-shaped object moving towards downtown. They end up snapping photographs and a short video of the object. MUFON Oregon would do a complete analysis of the video and the photographs. And my interpretation of all of the data is that it's legitimate. So 
September 2006. A fishing guide on the Rogue River snapped several photographs. While reviewing them later, he spotted this unidentified flying object above the ridge line. July 4th, 1992, a woman in Northeast Portland takes video of this strange light in the evening sky. April 21st, 2010. A man hears a loud roaring and looks up in the sky to see an unidentified flying object being chased by two F-15 fighter jets. The UFO is extremely luminescent, outshining the sun. And as it would turn out, the same object would be photographed three days earlier in San Bernardino, California. And in 2016, two friends in Beaverton, Oregon would capture video evidence of a triangular shaped light pattern flying over their city. And in 1989, near Lapine, Oregon, there was a series of 35 cattle mutilations. After an investigation, the Deschutes County District Attorney issued a report that stated that neither poisoning nor some strange cult behavior were responsible. However, the official cause was never disclosed and remains a secret to this day. Now these have all just been a few examples of some of the hotbed of activity that happens up in Oregon. It seems like every day there's some new photographic or video evidence of some unexplained phenomenon. We now live in a fully digital age where there are cell phones and cameras everywhere. So I will continue to do my best to find these images and this information and to bring it out to y'all. Well folks, I hope you have enjoyed this little history on strange and bizarre occurrences in the Northwest. In the future I plan on doing full length videos on some if not all of these topics, so keep your eyes peeled for those. Until next time guys, this has been Manny at Area 503. And I wish you all the best. And I am out of here to continue my search for universal truth.